Hello everyone, Dolphin Oracle here again tonight, covering the what's new for MX16. MX16.1 ISO was released uh, actually Thursday night, uh, Friday morning, depending on where you are in the world. And um, well, I'm going to show you what's new. Now, this installation I have right here is actually my original MX16 installation. Uh, so I've got 16.1 running in VirtualBox right now. So we're going to pull that up. There it is. It's got the nice big Kingfisher bird. The new MX6, MX logo, MX Linux logo. So what's new? So what's new? Number one, there's some, inst there's some installer improvements. Now if you need to look at the uh, release announcements, everything I'm going to talk about is in the release notes. You can go to the DistroWatch page. Uh, and click on either our website or on the release announcement link here and that will take you to the blog post I shrunk it down so it fit on my screen a little better but the uh, this will take you down to the blog post with everything I've got in here that uh, that they're talking about so what's new so the installer so number one the installer supports home folder encryption so home folder encryption is going to encrypt just the user's home folder it's not going to encrypt the entire precision partition um, does this in a way similar to Ubuntu we thought this would be a first place good first place to start we'll see how people like it and that is uh, well it's an experimental feature for us but in testing it's worked pretty well uh, so we'll see what people think about it also, a couple other uh, improvements in the installer. Certain Dell laptops uh, required a a flag to be set. Uh, either it didn't matter what the partition on the MS DOS partition table, you needed to set a boot flag on one of the partitions, and if on a GPT partition table, you had to set <sighs> the protected MBR boot flag okay, had to be set. If all that sounds like gobbledygook, if you had a Dell, I think it's a 6350. It's actually an amazingly popular corporate laptop. Um, it has a quirk, and it didn't show up until until a couple of our form testers ended up with a couple of these in their fleets, and shh, they might have tested it on the corporate laptops. I won't tell if you won't. Uh, and also, big news. Uh, actually, it's been in there for a while because we it, we it's been rolled up in some of the snapshots, but a lot of people haven't noticed. We updated the installer some time ago to include. Uh, an auto install feature like a whole disk auto install feature for UEFI system so yes it will go it will create the little ESP partition it will create the system partition and the swap partition and do all the install goodness and when you install grub it'll be in the right place to the to the EFI partition and again if that's not like gobbledygook to you just know it didn't work before and it does now so uh, so that's good. Uh, number two, we have an official Adobe Flash package. And what do I mean by Adobe official Adobe Flash? I mean uh, the, our, our project leader, Jerry3904, you'll find him in the forums, uh, with the backing of the community, went out to Adobe and said, can we distribute Flash? And here's how many users we have. Uh, what do you think? And Adobe came back and said, "Sure, here's the thing." Now there's a, there's some caveats with the agreement, um, but that allows us to have our own Adobe Flash plugin. And the new Adobe Flash plugin, we got the little preferences routine, um, but it will work with both Firefox and with Chromium-based browsers. Now at release on the ISO as it comes, there's a small bug in the Adobe Flash plugin package. It's already been corrected. It, 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 and you need, when you do your first set of updates, it'll come down if you're a Chromium user. It won't affect you on Firefox, but on Chromium, uh, there was a folder, of just a very, very small error. Uh, it, but it, it caused the Flash plugin not to work with Chromium out of the gate. They fixed it yesterday, so it will come down your regular updates. You don't have to do anything. Uh, but anyway, uh, you can. We got rid of MX Flash since we didn't need it anymore, and you can reach. Uh, you can reach. Uh, you can install or uninstall Adobe Flash plugin if you just want it gone. A lot of people do. Um, if you just want it gone, you can move it with, with reg, one of the regular package managers. Uh, of course, we got a new theme. You see that here. We got the big bird. We got the. Uh, slightly different. Let me open up my file manager here. Slightly different theming here with the with the file manager. It's actually Arc Dark for the window manager theme, the borders and such, and then our 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 Graybird inter internal theme. 
Uh, we had some new wallpapers. I know a lot of people like wallpapers. We don't. We've never had a tremendous number of wallpapers, but we do have some new ones. We have this uh, the Kingfisher, of course. And now we have this butterfly, which is nice. And what's the other new one? There's one more new one. Oh yes, the marguerite flower, which is actually very striking in my opinion as a very nice looking, uh, nice looking wallpaper. Anyway, in conjunction with all the other old wallpapers, they're all in there. Kingfisher here's the default, and you'll see him on the light, light DM login screen, and on the grub menus, and on the live boot menus. A version of the Kingfisher bird. Uh, we've also merged, uh, we've done a little consolidation with some of the MX tools. Let me crack open the tools uh, thing here, the tools menu. And you'll see uh, that there are a couple apps that are now missing. MX Test Repo Installer is gone. It was also called MX Install from Test Repo, depending on what version you picked it up with. And also MX uh, Debian Backports Installer is gone and also um, uh, MX panel orientation is gone. Now that's because we've consolidated a lot of these things. So MX panel orientation has been mixed in to MX default look. So let's crack open default look. And immediately you see that it now backs up your panel into a home.restore folder. That's your panel over here. And you got some new options. You can display the panel horizontally as usual, but you can also choose between top and bottom. Uh, to move things around. It'll try to preserve any customization so if you throw a launcher on there or something the plugins will still be on there when you when you switch when you switch positions switch positions and you also you can restore the default panel just like it is now or the backup and restore uh, options are here and for fun we've got the new light theme now I've got the we've got the MX16.1 light theme that's the default theme but you can also choose the MX16 light or dark themes as you wish and of course, the Firefox tweak and the Hexbox tweak for dark themes is in here too. And we got some just convenient icons here if you want to uh, use the XSCE standard stuff for changing for changing uh, for changing settings. So the panel flipper works fairly well. I'm going to flip it down here to the top because it didn't used to be able to do that. And bam, there it is on top. And you can see everything's still there. It lined up rather nice. Uh, let's see, I'm going to put it back to the side just because I am used to it being there. Yes, I do like my panel on the side. It makes sense on widescreen laptops. And for those of you out there who don't like your panel on the side, well, just put it on top or bottom. I don't really care. Okay, so that's MX Default Look. That's been combined with MX Panel Orientation. Uh, and also... Uh, uh, let's see here, flipping my notes, MX Package Installer has the capabilities of the old install from test repo and Debian Backports repo because it's been expanded into more of a full package manager. I'm not going to say it's as powerful as something like Synaptic, but it gets the job done. So we've got our popular applications tab, <clears throat> and this has got all the stuff that you know and love. You can see we have a new um, a new Flash tab here for Adobe Flash because you can remove it. If you checkbox that, you can see you get an uninstall and a reinstall option. So this has got some capabilities that people have been asking for for a while to be able to install and uninstall applications. Um, also, if you want to install a browser, of course, we've got Chrome and Google Chrome in here. And if you hit the little blue thing here, you're going to get a screenshot. Now, Chrome, that was a lousy example because Chrome, the Chrome screenshot's not all that great. But uh, I think Pale Moon's is pretty good. Let's see. Yeah, there's Pale Moon in a screenshot. Uh, so you've got that going for you. But the real cool stuff, uh, and besides, there's a lot of tweaks and tools and, and things to speed pack the package installer up on the back end. Uh, that's a lot of coding gobbledygook. We, we redid all these package definitions, so hopefully they work out for everyone. Uh, but the real new stuff is in the full app catalog. Now, if you click on that, you're going to see you're going to get a choice between stable repo. That's our usual repo. Now, it's labeled stable, but that's actually going to be whatever your actual repos Whatever repos you have enabled, that's what it's going to draw from. We assume that with the defaults that it will be the stable repo. We have the name of something. Um, then the MX test repo, we can pull the list for, the, from the, for what's in the test repo. Now, our test repo, again, I want to remind people that are new to MX Linux, 
test repo, MX test repo is not the same idea as Debian testing. Debian testing is the next version of testing of, of, of Debian. Uh, currently stretch, but next week sometime stretch will go final, so that it'll be you know whatever the next thing is. Uh, MX test is where we slap updated application packages and sometimes things like XSAE, but right now application packages um, that are of a higher version, but that no one's really tried out yet to make sure that they work right. We don't have an extensive, you know, corporate backed testing regime or a worldwide foundation of, of volunteers like Debian proper does, but we do have our test repo. So we put new apps in there, new versions of apps in the test repo, and you can and but, but no one was trying them out. So we got so we had install from test repo, the app, to help people do that more easily. It's been pretty popular. So we incorporated that into uh, MX package installer. So if you click this, you'll this this window will populate with the test repo packages. You don't have to futz around with your sources. You know, checking enabler, disabler, and app get updates, nothing. It does it all for you. Okay, I'll show you that here in a sec. And you get the same idea for Debian backports repo. Uh, for this case it's going to be Jesse backports, of course when when everything moves to stretch, we'll we'll probably change this thing up again and have it draw off a stretch. But anyway, so I'm gonna click the test repo. And it's going to download the package info. And I'll note that it's not going to. I'm not having to modify my sources. In fact, the sources have not changed at this point. The sources won't change until you actually want to install something. And you'll see you've got some stuff in here. Now, uh, I'm, I'm just going to pick something off the top of my head because it's important to a lot of YouTubers, which is OBS Studio. And you see it's up here to up to version 19. I, I forget what the version is in our regular stable repo. I think it's in the 14s around in there. But anyway, that's here for you. You just click it and hit the big install button, and away you go. And you can click back and forth between your other repos. The stable repo, um, again, is whatever sources you have enabled at the time. So I'm going to slap in OBS Studio and show you what's in there. Yeah, it's 0.14.2. So you can see it's, it, it does change. Uh, things up a little bit what packages are available that this was a huge change uh, it, it's it, interesting to see how people go we'll probably be making tweaks to it over time um, you can actually if something shows up as upgradable you can actually click an upgrade button here as well and upgrade and it'll select those packages that are able to upgrade it's again it's not synaptic okay it's not meant to do all everything that synaptic does if you want if you want it to do something that synaptic does just use synaptic honestly um, and synaptic is slightly faster if you're just messing around with the stable repos uh, but it is handy for easy access to the test and Debian backports repo although I, I hope you try the test repo first a lot of times our packages are newer than what's even in Debian uh, Jesse backports. So what else do we got? We have an updated manual. Uh, I'm not going to show you the manual, but the manual's there. But I will say this: the manual is also been translated into Italian and Russian, and there are other translations going forward. So we will be making that available uh, on the manual homepage. There's a link at the top of the MX forum. Just click on that, and it'll get you to. The, in fact, let me see if I can do that. Let's click on manuals. And uh, yes, English, 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 other languages. Let's see this page. And you see we have Italian and Russian and PDF. Oh, it looks like we got Spanish for MX15, certain chapters. This is kind of a status deal here. So you can see that's ongoing. If you want to help, if you've always wanted to help a distro out but didn't know where to start, translation, translation, translation. Um, coding's great. And we always need coders, but we need translators, too. They do a thankless job, except I'm going to thank them right now. Thank you, translators, for getting this stuff done. This is huge. Okay, so that's the new stuff in the MX tool. Oh, App Notifiers had some bug fixes. Um, that's the little updater thingy, Bob, down here. But if you go to Preferences, if, you want, if you're using an icon set that our little green and white boxes don't look very good with, you can choose the classic set, which happens to look quite nice with uh, apps like Fianza or something like that. Um, so that's kind of nice. You can see the difference here. I'm running the, the MX16 icon over here on my MX16 toolbar, but on the MX, but I've changed it to the quote unquote classic version there. It's got some other, it's got some menu tweaks, it's got some small bug fixes. Hopefully the icon doesn't, um, hopefully, hopefully everything works out okay for you on that. 
Uh, MX Repo Manager, which I had it in list, but MX Repo Manager has a select fastest MX Repo. And it goes through a spiel and figures out which ones are the fastest for you and selects them. Da, 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 da. I really should have checked to see how fast this was. The new selection will take effect next time your source shows. Now, see, it actually moved mine. I was defaulted to Utah, but now it's check setting mine to Los Angeles. Okay. Uh, let's see. Uh, we also have updated translation. Oh, yes, we've translated across most apps, and also we've got the wiki and the manual translations going on. So keep it up, guys. Translations are rocking. Um, minor point, we, we were hosting our ISOs on Antic, on the Antic SourceForge site. We've now shifted that over for organizational purposes to a MX Linux SourceForge site, so it's slightly different. So if you if you YouTubers out there have been have been following the RSS feed for Antics and you're looking for MX, you might want to, you know, follow them both. Oh yes, because Antics 17 will be coming soon, and that will be stretch-based, and the work's already progressed quite a ways on it. We're working out some kinks in QT, but uh, in, in Qt, but uh, keep your eyes open for that. But anyway, MX Linux SourceForge site, look for it. Uh, also, we've updated to LibreOffice 5.2.6. Yay, it's a new Office Suite. Um, but more importantly, it's a slightly different on the 64-bit versus 32-bit. That's mostly because we pulled it out of Jesse Backports, and they, they actually have different versions for, for 32 and 64. Uh, LibreOffice is a great big package. And everything's current on the updates up through Jesse 8.8 .8 base. So let's see. I'm going through checking over my release notes here. Uh, okay, fine. That's the major items. Uh, again, theming, the new package installer, home folder encryption. Well, there's a couple other tweaks and twips here and there to make things a little easier. Uh, calendar tweaks and, and little minor things. Now, Dio, why aren't you running the new ISO on your laptop? Well, to be honest with you, the boy, Alex Oracle, my oldest, graduated from high school and we had to go to do college orientation. So I have been living this release off my phone all week. So I actually haven't had time to install it. But secret, and this is not usual for an MX installation. I'm gonna cl I'm gonna shrink this down for a second and close this. This may look like an MX16 install, but actually this in this version of MX16, 16.1 is still MX16. So I've already upgraded through the regular app get upgrade. There are notes in the form for it, and there's a link in the release announcement if you need that. But I'm gonna go to my desktop settings. So this is my upgraded system, and I'm going to pick whatever I want. And you can see it's there. And you see I'm running the default dark theme. Pop down here to the MX default look. And I can choose this new MX 16.1 light default theme. Bam! Now when I upgraded, and there I am, it's, 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 it's where it needs to be. Um, now when I upgraded, uh, it does ask you if you want to accept a a new configuration for Light DM Login Manager. Whether you say yes or no, it's not going to break the system. If you say yes, you're going to get a a a Kingfisher Bird themed login screen. Otherwise, you're going to keep whatever it is you had before. And there's a few other odds and ends that are that are that are cosmetic but if you were happy with your settings before there's no reason not to keep them you're getting all the new apps and you're getting all the new uh, bug fixes so enjoy so new users download the ISO it's a great place to start catches you up to Debian 8.8 .8. and to be honest with you that LibreOffice upgrade is a kind of hefty one uh, and for everybody who's coming up through the ranks through upgrading well I f follow my example just do the upgrade and you're good to go for tips, tricks, how-tos, head over to mxlinux.org or throw up a post at forums.mxlinux.org. This is Dolphin Oracle signing off. Have a great night.